bottom, a bottom for next time. Just in case. Praise God for the day. Hey, y'all. I brought my glasses with me because a few weeks ago we were sitting right over there on a Warrior Nation video. And Pastor Kelly looked at me and said, Trey and read. And I said, Woo. I said all kind of stuff that was not in their Bible. <laughs> and I hope them people had their Bible open because I just sent them to the wrong, <laughs> the wrong place. I just want to start this, well, today, it's, not even, it's still morning. It's not morning anymore. I want to start today by just saying thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, yeah, thank you so much. So many people think that I'm wise, and what's funny about that is that I just get up there and repeat everything my mama told me. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to cry. I'm not going to do that, girl. Suck it up. <laughs> yeah, and so I, fe I feel so blessed that, uh, that I get to give her her first book today because I get my writing from my mom. And uh, just so grateful, yeah. I didn't mean to do this. I said I wasn't doing this. I'm trying to suck it up. But, yeah, I'm just so grateful. Um, I feel like uh, for many years I watched my mom write. For many years I wrote. And uh, I had a tablet and a pen everywhere I go. And when nobody else was interested in hearing what I had to say, or my ugly drawings, or my ugly visions, my mama was right there pushing me. And so, mama, I just want to say thank you. And um, I, don't, I don't know, I don't have any biological children yet. I haven't reached that milestone in my life, but I want to say that forever, my mom has always told me that I'm a writer. I'm a dreamer. And I'm 32 and it's happening. It's always been happening. I don't know what you speak of your children. I don't know what you say to your children, but uh, let me be a testament today that it matters. It really does matter uh, because I'm only standing here because of her, because of her sitting there listening to those horrible writings, the horrible songs. I mean, if y'all want to laugh, I'll just tell y'all one of my favorite things. I was a rapper for a moment. <laughs> and um, nobody else is really hype on me like talking about. Nobody, like, nobody, I mean, I was doing a Harlem Shake and all the kids were laughing at me and I was like, listen, I'm going to do something. I'm doing something. And I walked up to church one Sunday and it was you Sunday and I was like, security, security, don't try to hold me. My praise is too wild. Y'all can't possibly sit down, look around like something wrong with me. It's Trinity doing it for the Almighty, Jesus who saved me. Yes, I've been saved, I've been saved. <laughs> hilarious so yeah excuse me y'all that's hilarious but yeah it's been a long time coming and I'm so glad that I write better now but I always I've always had a burning passion to just serve God and that's, that's my truth um and I'm so grateful that the Lord led me to write now not next decision to determine your destiny and I don't mean to keep talking about my mom but for all of my life my mom has told me life is all about the, the choices you make all about your decisions and so it's like you don't want to live a life of recovery you want to live you know trying to pick up the pieces you just want to live in the blessings of god a good life isn't too good to be true and i know y'all have heard me say this online a lot of times so i'm just telling y'all i'll be repeating my mama like for real so <laughs> and because of her i've been able to to just experience god in a way that a lot of people have not I've always been very mindful of my decisions, even though I have not done everything right. I just love to share my love for God with other people because he's protected me, he's kept me. And I was just talking to my brother Terrence uh, last week about God's grace, and it's so funny how people think about grace is only when we fall. But I have a testimony that God, God's grace keeps us standing. And so I'm just grateful. I'm, I'm truly grateful to be here today. So thank you, Mama. I love you. Yeah. She got on my nerves right before I came down here. She's like, where the rest of your shirt? I'm like, Mama. I'm like, Titus, take her downstairs. Like, <laughs> just get her, please. <laughs> but she is literally my bestest friend in the whole wide world. And I'm so grateful. I'm just, I'm just grateful for my mom. I'm grateful for my husband, um, who is my other favorite person in the whole wide world. Thank you, Brandon. I did not do anything in setting up for today. I have not done anything to prepare but um, my speech here. That's all I've done. Brandon did everything else. Everything else. So everything y'all see. It's Brian, and I just want to say thank you, baby. I really appreciate you. Alice, thank you. 
everybody came in the room like, it's so beautiful down there. I got a text from my best friend, Pia, and that's because Alice came last night and this morning. I just got dependable people, y'all. I don't even have to worry about it or think about it, and I'm just grateful. Um, that's why I be crying, because I'm like, God, I know you love me, for real. My people remind me of his love, and so thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, am I missing anybody, Brandon? Thank you to everybody. You know, the last job I worked at before I came to Warrior Nation was a little country Baptist church that we have a good service every Sunday at 11 o'clock. And I would go over there and I would play the organ and we'll lead worship. And uh, uh, many times I would bust out and go to crying over there because of God's goodness. But listen, I never thought to see some of those people from that church in here this morning. So I just want to say hi to the Queens back there. Hello to Miss Walker. Uh, I really appreciate you all coming. Um, I served at Shady Grove for about five years before the Lord transitioned me. And so I'm so grateful that, um, that they thought enough of me even still to show up today. So thank you all so much. That means the world to me. I can say thank you to everybody over and over and over again, but I really appreciate all of you being here. To my best friend in the whole wide world who is current. Girl, like, get it together. <laughs> Girl, you're embarrassing. <laughs> I love you. I love you so much. Uh, when I first met Pia, um, we were like, we are night and day, period. If y'all know either of our personalities, we are night and day. And when I first met her, there were so many things that I thought to be just right as it pertains to like religion and, and you know, what I believe. And sharing a relationship with someone who is completely different than me opened my mind so much. But what I love about my relationship with her, she never tried to convince me to change my mind but she convinced me to change my perspective about a lot of things. Because some people, when they're not like you, they want to make you feel like you're wrong. But I'm really grateful for my relationship with her because it has changed my perspective so much. And it's made me become uh, the woman that you guys are seeing. Um, I don't even know her yet. I'm still discovering who this new Trinity is, but I'm so grateful for all of you being here. Can't say that enough. I can't say that enough. As I begin to transition and I... I don't know who this is for, but one of the things that has rubbed me completely wrong, I just say it, you know. It's like when you transition and the people that you know the, the most, that you know best, the people are around you, they don't like you changing. Yeah. And that's been really hard for me. I'm just I'm keeping it 100 with you guys. And I don't find offense in them not really liking my change. I find offense that, you know, this is new for me. Why you just want to act right? Hug me. You know, I don't, you know what I'm saying? And so I don't know. I'm really grateful for everybody being here today because that's been a really a real struggle for me as I've been evolving. But I'm so glad today that that's not even on my heart or on my mind. Thank y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for showing up for me. Thank you guys for embracing me. Thank you guys for pushing me. It means the absolute world to me. I'll never forget who was in this room today because this is as small as it will ever be. Period. As small as it'll ever be, and listen, I, it means the world to me that, that you're here, so uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to hop right in today. Now, not next, decisions that determine your destiny. Y'all excited about it? Has anybody in here read it yet? <laughs> yeah, you've already read it? Finished it. Um, but I guess before I do that, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, y'all y'all know I pray, so I ain't going to even try to pray with y'all. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this, this time. Thank you that now is the time. I thank you that you've called me to this room, to these people in this room. And I thank you now, Lord, that what I have to say will change lives, will change perspectives, will change outcomes forever. We give you praise and we give you glory for what you're about to do. Our minds are open, our hearts are ready for what you want to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm going to hop right in today. Um, I need a book. Well, come on, Cal. Yes. Cal is the person on staff at Warrior Nation that at any given moment, we're all minding our business. We're all praying for somebody online. We're doing something, and he's in the corner shouting. Yes. <laughs> don't you All right, guys, so 
I'm gonna hop right in. I don't know if you guys wanna read along with me, you can, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I'm reading the last chapter of the book that's titled Now Not Next. It says, imagine it is the middle of August in Mississippi. That means the high today could be upwards of 98 to 103 degrees. It's not just hot, it is also humid. You are resting in the comfort of your home, enjoying the air conditioner and an iced tea while avoiding the outside temperatures around, around un until around 7 p.m. In Mississippi, especially in the Delta region, we don't go outside until the sun starts to set. Amen? Y'all yeah, know we're not going outside here in August. We're not doing it. <laughs> For my fellow Mississippians, I am certain that this is not the same sun from the 90s we played in outside from sun up to sundown. <laughs> anyway, you are sitting in your home and all of a sudden everything powers off. As Mississippians, our worst fear is having a power outage on a hot summer day. It is not about just being hot, but you have a solid hour to have the power restored before everything in your refrigerator and freezer starts to thaw and spoil. Imagine waiting on Entergy or the local light company to restore the power and during the wait, all of your food spoils. Because misery loves company, you step outside hoping to see your neighbors on their porches trying to catch a breeze and possibly have a conversation about how unfair these circumstances are, but no one is outside. In fact, you notice that every house has power but yours. You are frustrated now because you thought this outage was one you had no control over, only to realize all you had to do was flip the breaker. Four hours have gone by, you are sweaty, and your food is spoiling. You immediately rush over to the breaker box, flip the breaker, and prepare to throw out all of the food you previously bought. While throwing away your pick five deal of meat you purchased at the local market, feelings of anxiety and frustration set in because you know this loss could have easily been avoided if you had only gotten up and checked the breaker box when the outage initially happened. Sometimes outages are okay when we are convinced that we are not experiencing the outage alone. It is not until we see other people moving in their power that causes us to think one of three things. I wish I had that. Success is only for the lucky ones and the all-time favorite, I got next. But my question to you is, why are you not experiencing the power now? According to 2 Timothy 1 and 7, the power has been distributed to all of us, not just a certain group of people. The only difference between you and the people you are witnessing is their willingness to check the breaker box. What is the breaker box? The core values we have discussed throughout this book, such as appreciation and honor, love, accountability, all determine the caliber of your character. Doing the work to build good character is essential to creating opportunities that ignite the power within us to make our dreams a reality now. The promise is available to all of us, but few people are willing to disintegrate the parts of our character that challenges us to get into a position that is necessary to receive it. The food did not just thaw and spoil because you went out, because the power went out. It thawed and spoiled because you were comfortable laying on the couch, scrolling through social media and sipping tea until you started to smell your groceries go to waste. We often assume that we have to wait for help when all we have to do is get up. Once you get up, you will discover that you have everything you need to create a new reality. We already have the power to access the life God intended for us to have. And that life is available to all of us now, not next. But this God kind of life requires fortified faith that does not merely exist but executes the vision that God gave for our lives. So that's the, oh, uh, y'all want to clap? Y'all go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so I titled the last chapter of the book, Now Not Next, because I wanted people to finish it, ready to go into what God is telling them to do now. Yes, now. All right, so I'm going to define breaker box for you. Your circuit breaker box is the connection between the power grid outside of your home and the wiring inside. The main service panel is the central distribution point that ensures that all the electrical outlets, appliances, lights, heating, and more get the necessary power. What is the breaker box of your life? What holds the power to the choices life brings us every day? What ensures that the reality we want isn't possible for us, isn't just possible for us, but available to us? 
I got multiple choices, I'm gonna teach you. Y'all ready? <laughs> A, your attitude. B, your character. C, your work ethic. And D, your health. I'm gonna ask the question again. What is the breaker box of your life? What holds the power to the choices life brings us every day? What ensures that the reality we want isn't just possible for us, but available to us? A, your attitude. B, your character. C, your work ethic. And D, your health. Do I have a student in the room? My man. Your character, that is absolutely correct, your character. Our character determines our choices, and our choices determine our quality of life. Can you honestly say that you are now enjoying your quality of life? Character is a mental, character is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Now Not Next, Decisions That Determine Your Destiny is a book that highlights the distinction between where you are currently in life and where you really hope to be. For many of us, it's the big things, right? We think about decisions like, you know, it's, it's the big things. Where and if we're going to college, the profession we choose and the money we make in that profession. If we want marriage, who do we marry? If we want children, how many? The big things. But a quality life is not built in our big decisions. A good quality life is curated in the small things. Y'all know I got a word, period. Solomon, Sons of Solomon, <laughs> the second chapter, the 15th verse, I'm reading the Passion Translation. It says, you must catch the troubling foxes that hinder our relationship, for they raid our budding vineyard of love to ruin what I've planted in you. Will you catch them and remove them from me? We will do it together. And the KJV says, take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Can you guys agree that it's always the little things that get us? Always the little things. It's the little things like not making an effort, apologizing when you are wrong, not being accountable, not being teachable, not being present for the people you say you love, not working past your discomfort that eats at the vine. And without the vine, how can you have fruit? And what is fruit? Fruit is evidence that you've, that you've labored. Many of us have heard the words, it's time for me and to enjoy the fruits of my labor. But rarely do we see people labor for the harvest of a better life. We want fruit, just fruit. But what good is the fruit if it isn't ripe? Do y'all want fruit out of season? I ain't with that, I, I don't want it. <laughs> now not next, decisions that determine your destiny displays a vineyard of beautiful possibilities and the effort we must continuously make to get the weeds out. A weed is a plant that grows where it is not wanted. Do I have any gardeners in here? Y'all hate weeds, right? It's always in the way. Weeds take up space and discourage desirable plants. The defining characteristic of a weed is that it grows where it is not wanted. Most weeds are taller, rangier, and seem to grow faster than any more plants. Weeds make the whole garden less attractive and, unappear, and appear to be unattended. Are there weeds manifesting in your life? For example, you've been working hard on a lot of things or one specific thing, but weeds keep growing, causing you to have a less desirable outcome. Could it be that the little things that we sometimes refuse to acknowledge that is causing life to be enjoyable? Could it be the little things? I want you to imagine your character as the main service panel of your life, where we find the components I wrote about in this book. The small breakers in your breaker box are transition and change, love, appreciation and honor, friendship, financial freedom, forgiveness, and accountability. In what area have you lost your power? If you're having a hard time answering that, can I suggest to you that it may be the very thing you've been given a next to? Perhaps God has made provision for you in a new city, but every time the opportunity presents itself, you talk yourself out of it saying things like, I don't think now is the time. Or maybe the burden of pride has taken its hold on you and apologizing to people you feel deserved it. Can't wait. Who that's for today? Y'all ain't gonna laugh at me. Ah, 
Because, you know, when we do people wrong and we don't really want to own it or take accountability, we say things like, they'll be all right, right? But here you are standing in a vineyard you put so much effort into, and it's filled with weeds prohibiting you the outcome you want now, in this season, not in the next season. So here we go. I'm going I'm to keep it 100 with you. I'm going to be very transparent because I've been really struggling with being more than a friend. I feel like for some time, as God has developed this thing within me with friend fusion and teaching the people about relationships and carrying on, I love that because I'm passionate about people. I'm passionate about loving people. But as the Lord has been, you know, pressing in my heart to do more, I found myself scared. All right? I'm just keeping it 100. And I was over here praying a few weeks ago, and I got to ball. We, we pray in this room, by the way. If y'all feel his presence, that's why. <laughs> We pray in this room at 4 a.m. in the mornings. But anyway, I was in prayer this particular day, and I texted Brand. I'm like, God, set me up. I don't like this. Like, I feel like he set me up. And because it's like I did what he told me to do, and then I'm doing it, and then he gave me more instruction. I'm like, no, I want to have my book release a day party style. I want cocktails flying around the room because I'm a friend. I make everybody feel good. I'm like, you survive, you know? And I'm like, God just spoke to me in prayer and said, no, that's not the way you're supposed to do this. And it hurt my feelings because I, I know, I, you, you know how you know that thing that God has given you, but you don't really want the responsibility of that thing. And so the Holy Spirit just spoke to me so good and rebuked me so well. He said, I never called you to host parties. I called you to host my presence. And... <laughs> <laughs> and as I continued to battle with that thing, I think I went around to everybody's office that day like, what does this preaching look like for me? Because I'm not trying to, I mean, I love Sarah Jakes Roberts. Like, that's my girl. That's my sis. Y'all know that. But no, I don't want to do that. I, I'm not a preacher. Like, I'm not trying to. And Brandon says, babe, you've already been doing it. <laughs> you've already been doing it. Why are you running away from it? And I'm like, well, call me Jonah, babe, because I'm running. I'm out. <laughs> Okay, I'm out. I do not want that kind of responsibility. And I've been just keeping it transparent with you guys. I've been very prayerful about what, about what God wants me to do next. And I feel like it's something that I had to make a decision that, okay, I got I've been asking you for something. You, you had me to right now, not next. You, you had me to do friend fusion, and I've done all of that. Now I feel like you set me up. I'm not, I'm not going to hold revivals. But then Brandon's like, you've been holding revivals. You, you call your, your Instagram about all your friends revival. I'm like, okay, so maybe it just doesn't look like everybody else. Maybe it doesn't look like, you know. And I've come up with everything to avoid it because I'm Jonah now. I've been running. But I told the Lord today that what he had given me, I would do it. I wouldn't be the friend running around passing everybody their cocktails. I wouldn't be the friend that's making everybody feel so good, but I would make people consider what God is truly calling them to because that's my assignment in the earth realm. And I hope that that short story encourages you to take your assignment and run with it. Yeah. So I read what I wrote. I was in prayer a few weeks ago, and I got instruction from God that made me feel like God set me up. All this time I've marketed myself as a friend because he told me to. I created Friend Fusion, a space for people to feel a sense of belonging, seen and cared for because he told me to. I wrote this book because he told me to, but along the way I somehow perceived that I was only a friend until the Holy Spirit made an abrupt correction to me during prayer. I wanted to do a day party, cocktails, like all the things we enjoy, but God spoke to me so clearly and said, I never sent you to host parties, I sent you to host my presence. Stop the party plans and do it this way. So I'm sitting here crying, bawling. Because first of all, God, you're you doing too much. <laughs> you're doing too much. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is literally what I was saying in prayer. Like, you're doing too much. Y'all ever just felt God's presence so heavy? And he's like, yeah, you're going to obey me. And I'm like, hold on, no, you're doing too much. And God just corrected me. He, he like, you know, y'all ever feel like God spank y'all because you know better? He spanked me. He said to me, every time you enter into rooms, this is going to sound familiar to you, Aisha. He says, every time you enter into rooms not wanting to do too much, you invalidate your place in the very place that I have prepared for you. And I'm like, because honestly, I told y'all, the, the, the truth is I've really struggled with evolving, not just evolving, but how people respond to me evolving. 
And I was like, they really ain't gonna like me. And like, nobody's, they gonna be intimidated, they gonna feel a way, they care, no, you, you know, I'm just keeping it 100. And God's like, girl, do what I told you to do. And so, that's why I'm not passing out cocktails right now. <laughs> I was recently reflecting on Matthew 14, where Jesus and Peter have their infamous walking on the water moment. Before this particular part of the text, Jesus is preaching to the 5,000 people. He fed two fish and fill in the blank class. Y'all remember y'all about? Two fish in. All right. <laughs> Jesus stays for a while because, as you know, when Jesus blesses the food, when, when God put his hand on anything, what's happening? Multiplies. Multiplies. And I feel like it was black people there. Because when there's a buffet, what are we going to do? We're going to stay for a while. Period. We're gonna, we not, we not going to come in here and eat and leave. We're going we to be here for a while. So Jesus tells the disciples, you know, it's getting late. I'm going to stay here with the people. I'm going to finish up their food. I'm going to send them home. Y'all go on and get across the lake because it's getting late, right? So in this order, Jesus sends the disciples out into the lake. He sends the people home, and then Jesus goes to pray. The text says that as he was praying, nightfall came. Pause. Now, I'm reading Matthew's version of this, and, I don't, you know, it's funny to me that in the next passage of this text, Terrence, it's 3 a.m. when we see Jesus. Y'all ever been praying and fell asleep? Y'all don't want to say that about Jesus, but I do. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, why don't we see him again until 3 a.m.? Did Matthew not want to tell us Jesus fell asleep? But it, it made me feel better about the moments I fell asleep when I was praying. <laughs> so I was reading it, and we don't see Jesus again until 3 a.m. And now Jesus is out praying, and then the text goes to the, the disciples being out in the middle of the lake. They're experiencing strong winds and heavy waves, very heavy waves. They're fighting for their lives, literally. And that's exactly how I felt that morning in prayer. I was like, you sent me out here. I felt like the disciples, you gave me instruction. I did it. Now you're telling me to do this, but where are you? Y'all ever felt like that before? You ever felt like God just set you up? And so I imagine that I imagine the disciples felt like God had literally just sent them up. Just, Jesus, you sent me out here. Where are you? You know, here we come. Jesus, walking on the water. Who walks on the water, right? I love God, y'all. So Jesus, they see Jesus walking on the water, and they're so, they're afraid. They think it's a ghost, but it's, it's Jesus coming to them. And while I was writing this, the Holy Spirit gave me a nugget for somebody in this room, and he says, God says, I'll never send you to a place where I won't be present. I don't know who that's for, but the Holy Spirit told me you needed that this morning. And so I, until this moment over here, I didn't realize how much doubt I had in myself, right? Honestly, because I'm a pretty confident person. Everybody around who knows me, they know that, you know, I, listen, when I'm walking in the room, heavy, period. I believe in me, baby. <laughs> For the most part, I say I'm a pretty confident person. I'm sure of myself, even when I'm not very sure of everything else. But this is a defining moment for me as I came to realize that I've been telling everyone else to break the boxes that society and Satan has put on them. But here I am in one afraid that if I break it, the responsibility of breaking it just might break me. Because honestly, Pastor Keller tell you, I ain't all the way 100% delivered from cussing. And, and, I, and I'm, you know, what? Y'all don't want me to be honest? I'm going to do it every time I'm going to be honest. And there are some things that I just feel like if I get in certain rooms, in certain spaces, somebody try me, I don't know what might come out of my mouth. <laughs> and I don't know if I want that kind of mantle, Right? And so I was really struggling with that, but God has given me a peace that surpasses all understanding, and I'm really glad about that. I trust that he'll speak for me, right? And so um, I don't mind being obedient, but the doubt enters when I think about the responsibility that obedience brings. Can I really handle the strong winds and the heavy waves of a new assignment? Too much is given, much is required, and every time something is required of me, I get scared. My big confidence shrinks. I find myself feeling too little for big responsibilities, which is funny because my mom is here. She'll tell you I've always had big responsibilities. I've always dealt with things and handled things much bigger than me. And, you know, that being said, sometimes we don't realize that God has already prepared us. We're asking, we're believing for God to do something that he's already done. He's been preparing you. He's already prepared you for the destination that he's already prepared for you. But when God tells us to do the new thing that he didn't let us on to, 
before we went and did that first thing, we get scared because we're convinced that we're really not prepared. So that being said, I feel like I was like Peter in Matthew 14, scared but curious, because here are the disciples in the middle of the lake fighting for their lives, and here comes Jesus walking on the water. They think Jesus is a ghost because who walks on the water? And then Jesus says, take courage, I am here. So Peter says, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come. So Jesus says, come. And Peter makes his way out of the boat, starts walking toward Jesus on the water. Y'all get that? Peter starts to walk on the water. The wind gets high, the waves get heavy, and then he's distracted. Peter yields to the distractions and he starts to sink. And what God revealed to me is if I yield to what, how everybody else feels about me growing and evolving, I will start to sink. And everything that I've been preaching about now being the time, I'm going to be the one talking about next time. And so I find that we want God to be able, so able that he enables us. But God doesn't want to, to do that at all. God wants to show us that we are just as able, just as capable, because greater is he that is within us. And I feel like Peter started sinking because he didn't even, it didn't even register, him, register to him that he was doing the same thing that Jesus was doing. The doubt sunk in, maybe the disbelief that I'm actually walking, am I really walking on water right now? Sinking. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants us to be distracted away and detour away from the destination, away from the plan, away from what God really wants to do in our lives. Jesus is telling Peter, I'm sorry guys, Jesus is telling Peter, you were, you were, sorry, Jesus is telling Peter, you were walking on the water until you yielded to your distractions. And the only thing you're supposed to be focused on is getting to me. How can we ever step into our now with the next mentality? This is why God allows certain changes in circumstances that our mustard seed faith can, so that our mustard seed faith can become flourishing faith. We think that faith is watching God do something for us. But real faith is allowing God to do a work in us so that we're able to not just eat from, body, eat from everybody else's vineyard, but our own vineyard. Your distractions are inflicting doubt, and that doubt is causing you to detour, or should I say procrastinate, away from the destination that God has prepared for you now. You're not just saying next because of your circumstances. You're saying next because you are distracted. Scripture shows us that Peter walked on the water, but his doubt caused him to sink, which caused him not only, to, not only to not do what God called him to, but it caused a doubt and a delay and a failure in his performance. Have you been failing at your performance? I feel like a lot of times when I, I doubt God, I don't perform like I would if I actually believed him. And I, I love to say this, a lot of people are begging God for something. But if you believe God, you never have to beg him. You don't have to beg. If you actually believe him, you'll never find yourself begging him. Because belief is not just the state of believing. It's an action word. So if I say I believe God for a new house, that means I'm already paying my bills on time. That means I'm already doing the things I got to get to get my credit where it needs to be to approve. Like I'm already doing it. It's not, I'm not just wait, over here just living my life ball now trying to make sure I can match up with everybody on Instagram with no money, credit score shot, not doing nothing to get the house. If I believe him for it, then I'm already moving in it. And so, that being said, I'm going to wrap up now. God told me to tell everybody in this room today that we get to determine our ETA. The place is prepared for us. It's already been, it's been prepared, you know, before he laid the foundations of this earth. But we get to decide when we arrive. And I don't know about y'all, but I really want to be on time for what God has for me. I do. I truly do. And this book helps you to discover your delays, the little things causing your delays and your doubt. But most of all, now not next decisions that determine your destiny, helps you to discover the destination that God has already prepared for you. And I'm really excited to share this day, this occasion, this moment with you. And I, my prayer is that when you read this book that you won't just read it, but you will apply what the Holy Spirit is giving you, not what I'm giving you, but what the Holy Spirit is giving you. Because I love to tell people, as I was writing, I'm like, I'm not even this smart. I know God is talking to me. And so I'm really, I feel so blessed. I feel so grateful for all of you. I know that you guys are going to get the book, but my prayer 
is that you would realize that this book is not just any old book. A, a message like now, not next, right? It's not just any old book. I want you to read it with an open heart, with an open mind, and I want you to go forth knowing that God is calling you to something. And God is not trying to prepare a single thing for you. God is trying to prepare you. And it happens in our decisions every day, the little things, the little foxes destroy the mind, the little things, the little things. I'm not speaking to her because she ain't speak to me. The little things like, you know, I lied, but I'm never going to admit that I lied. The little things, like, I know I didn't treat you right, but I'm never going to apologize to you for it. The little things, like, I'm not going to get up on time. I'm going to keep hitting this alarm clock, knowing the Holy Spirit been pressing up on your heart to get up early. I don't know who that's for. <laughs> knowing that the Holy Spirit has been pressing up on your heart. You know, I find that getting up early, I know a lot of people laugh at us at Warrior Nation. It's okay, huh? <laughs> God's doing a mighty thing, a good thing, you hear? Through prayer. And so I found that getting up early, the Bible says, seek me early while I may be found. I found that the best instruction in the morning, the sweetest. Like, I found that God, I can hear God so clearly before y'all start talking to me on Instagram, I'm curious, no? And <laughs> it's the truth. And uh, a lot of people don't want, don't want to get up early and seek God. But that's where, that's where life really starts to unfold for you. You know, a lot, of, a lot of you know me. You know me from being an organist at your church. You know me from being your little cousin playing basketball. You know me for being your big sister, but who y'all see now? Y'all like, who is this girl? It started in the morning in prayer. <laughs> it started in prayer. So this book, Now Not Next Decision to Determine Your Destiny, is for you to pursue not only God for what he wants to do for you, but what God wants to do in you. And that's all I have today. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank y'all again. I want to take um, as many pictures as I can. Um, would you got something for me, up baby? Yeah, my husband, fine. God did that. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so lucky. Um, I'm, I'm blessed, y'all. Thank you all so much. I really hope that this presentation blessed you guys. I'm looking forward to what God wants to do, and not just in my life, but all of our lives. I feel like nothing is happenstance. Even if you, just, you said that you weren't coming and you still made it, I spoke to Jason on the way in. He's like, I don't know how I feel. That means a lot to me that you don't know how you feel, but you still show it up for me. I got friends, y'all, out here in these streets. I love y'all. Thank you so much. I just pray that God continues to give you your now. All right? I see y'all taking pictures and signing books and carrying on. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, y'all shop over there, shop the merch, grab a book, and I'm willing to sign them all.